say, first of all, that I did not do this doing yoga. <laughs> this day I fell down the stairs. So I wasn't trying to transition from scorpion into chaturanga or trying to do a handstand. I just <laughs> fell down. Um, this book was conceived in Boulder and uh, was, I began it in Boulder. And so I have a lot of gratitude for Boulder. Um, for the way that this book turned out and the way that I was able to write it. Um, there are several people here who were really a big part of the birth of the book. Um, good friends, Leslie, Wendy, Life. I know I'm going to forget people, and this is sounding kind of Academy Awards-ish, so I'll keep that to a minute. But I want to thank Janine Fox because I got to write in such a beautiful place. And um, I want to thank Jessica McCray for some really instrumental early conversations about um, practice. And I especially want to thank Robert Spellman, my teacher, who's here. Um, and I'll just begin by reading the prologue. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, so, prologue, camel. Taking up yoga in the middle of your life is like having someone hand you a dossier about yourself. A dossier full of information you're not really sure you want. <laughs> I hadn't been doing yoga long when the information began to come in. One cloudy January afternoon, 20 of us were lowering ourselves backward into camel pose, as slowly and tentatively as swimmers entering cold water. We kneeled on our mats, our feet sticking straight out behind us. The idea was this. You reached back with both hands and grabbed your heels. You thrust your hips forward. Meanwhile, your chest rose up into the air. It seemed a little corny, but I was willing to give it an honest try. I did it once. My hands reached, my hips thrust, my chest, I hoped, rose. I came out of the pose, which was at least as scary as going into the pose. I sat for a moment and watched the other students reaching, thrusting, rising, not crimping, at least visibly. God, they really have the hang of it. I sank back in child's pose for a rest and caught a whiff of onions from my hands. I had stuffed a chicken and put it in the oven for Bruce and our one-year-old Lucy before I raced off to yoga. The chicken was my passport out of the house. I left them food as though it were a piece of me, synecdoche, a part representing the whole, a sail representing a fleet, a crown representing a king, a chicken representing a mother. A chicken roasting in the oven was virtue dis discernible. There it was, love, concern, nurturing, all rolled into a four-pound organic fryer. <laughs> Camel, all right, time to try again. I lowered gently backward into the pose, at the same time reaching, reaching upward with my chest. Suddenly, I got a fluttery, scary feeling across my breastbone. It felt like something might tear. I carefully lifted out of the pose and spoke up. Um, Fran, when I'm doing the pose, I have this feeling in my chest, kind of a scary, tight feeling. My teacher, Fran, was adjusting someone across the room. She had a way of looking like a thoughtful seamstress when she made adjustments. An inch let out here, a seam straightened there, and everything would be just right. She might as well have had pins tucked between her lips and a tape measure around her neck. Without missing a beat or looking up, she said, oh, that's fear. Try the pose again. <laughs> fear, I hadn't even known it was there. 